And just too late. I was supposed to be going to the Moulin Rouge on Saturday. Come fly with me, let's fly, let's fly away. If you can use some exotic booze, there's a bar in Far Bombay. Come fly with me, let's fly, let's fly away. I've been everywhere. Yeah. I'm trying to get to Malaga. Do you have a ticket? Have you bought a ticket? I've been over there, checked in. You haven't checked in, you haven't got a ticket. Sally was here before. Who? Sally. Don't know how Sally. She just went. For manager Michelle, a tough decision. Has this passenger had too much drink or is he just a bit eccentric? I just speak French, Japanese, and all sorts. Fantastic. Well, don't speak them to me because I can't. It's a matter of service. When I see Mr. Stavros, I check it in and out of Holiday Inns. <laughs> Well, it gets his room then, because that's not even his name. Oh, yeah, I'm making a mistake. Oh, right, I'm making a mistake. I want to see your ticket that you bought. Ah. That's his dust. OK, it says Bristol to Barcelona, and it's just written in pen. It's nothing, that's not a... I thought I was going to Malaga. That's not a ticket, that is just the time of an aircraft. American Express, no good, huh? If you're buying a ticket, yes. What about E. Albuquerque? Do you want to buy a ticket with us or not? Michelle's patience is running out. Let me an idea. OK. How much are the tickets? And where do you want to go? Ooh, la, 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 Malaga. Do you want to go to Malaga today? Today. Do you want Might a return get... ticket or just No, I ain't coming away? back. I'm just going to Malaga, buy an apartment and go away. Very computers and tents and scenes. It would be £129.99. You got a pint of a lager? Sorry? Can I drink on the plane? You can buy drinks on the plane, yes. Mm. But I feel you're a little bit intoxicated now, really? so I'm not happy to sell Too your drunk tickets. to fly. We do full of the plane, and fly like a seagull. Mm -hmm. You think so? Mm -hmm. You ever flown? Not by my own. Uh, You've been on the whole Viking line. I've been all over the world. So. So what? Yeah. You say? Yeah. Okay, I say. Goodbye to you. I say. Goodbye to you. Thank you. I'll get a time eventually. Where's the sun? I'll not be driving home tonight because the fumes from here, <laughs> OK? Another one, another one. From fumes to fuming. This place is <laughs> Two minutes late for a check-in, wouldn't it? The day's not getting any better for Michelle. Nick Spray and Rachel Foy have just missed the Amsterdam check-in. We were well, one minute and five seconds for the flight, they weren't allowed on. So, idiots. And they also told we rung up and they also said we have five minutes leeway and they're not allowed on. So, we keep <laughs> That is, but all day try to get up here. Of course, there's no signs and all the roads anyway. Get, finally get up here a minute half late and it's all we got here just got one here minute after minute past. 11 minutes past. I mean, what, once the agents have asked the dispatcher who liaises with the pilot and he says, no, that's out of our hands, yeah. it's a missed flight, you know, you need to be here a good hour before a flight. So uh, what we can do for you is transfer you on to tomorrow's Amsterdam flight. It will be £35 per person for a rescue fee. What are we going to do? Oh, I'm just going to go. £219 for a our options are we either go home and waste £219 that we spent or we spend an extra £34 per person. per person for a day less and we travel at 7am, which means we've got the same bristle all night. I can understand the frustrations, you know, of getting here late and not being allowed on, but I won't deal with the standing there swearing at me, you know, about the roads or the W whatever's, you know, go away, calm down, come back and I'll deal with it that way. Meanwhile, in Luton, another group of passengers are going nowhere. Have you checked everywhere in the suitcase? Yeah, twice. I think I've dropped it. What's that? Could you have dropped it at home, maybe? Huh? Phone home. Oh, you phone home and they checked nothing there. Gemma Teal has organised a special family trip for her mum, Shirley. It's her 25th, my sister's 25th wedding anniversary. Mm. 
But despite six months of careful preparation, there's a hitch. Well, my name's Gemma. Um, I wonder if you can help me. I'm at least not got the minute. Um, I'm due to fly to Paris with my mother and my auntie for her 25th wedding anniversary. We don't have my mother's passport. We've searched everywhere, and I think we, we've sort of admitted defeat that it's lost. But will the passport office have any sympathy? Is there any way that we can get a, a replacement passport today? We just need to make sure we can get it replaced today. We're only going for the weekend. We're only going for the weekend. Manager Leo Jones runs a tight ship, and today is no exception. Guys, sorry, I'm really, I'm sorry to interrupt. We've got the other person here in your group. Do you want them to go or not? Oh. What do you mean go? What? Because they're waiting for you to to decide whether they should go or not, and we need to know now as we're about to close check in. Oh, right. Thank you. Right, and they can't give you a passport. All right. I'll the family are forced to leave mum behind in Leo's capable hands. We do our best you? to sort her out. Please do your best, okay. Mum. I've got my mobile on. Yeah? I, I've had to go. And uh, it, everything was all sorted. The hotel, everything's all sorted. But uh, we're supposed to be going to the Moulin Rouge on Saturday. Her chances are slim, and I'm trying to exhaust everything. We've got one of our colleagues now ringing Paris to see if they can let her in. Fingers crossed, they say yes. Who knows? I hope so. Hello. Hello again. <laughs> I calmed down a bit now. I'm like, I can't just swear. <laughs> Having had time to think about their actions, Nick and Rachel have returned to the sales desk to change their flight. Uh, down there. But Dad Stephen has been doing some research. Good or bad? Really? Would they have let us on? No, we'll try it, yeah. But I want you to go through to the gate. Uh, my dad just talked to um, British Airways and they said they would have let us go through the gate if we were late. So it just shows. They don't let people on if they're late. Well, they just let someone board. It was 20 minutes late, apparently. It could be a different situation altogether. The aircraft could have had a slot that's staying here. Mm. There's many, many factors. I mean, do you want to go tomorrow? Or do you want to keep up with the aggravation? I'm, I'm just saying. We've just been over to speak to Airways. I'm not aggravating this at all. I'm just saying. Airways. Different uh, British Airways, different set of people with different things. We're just saying. It doesn't affect you at all, does it? So well, uh, Your attitude does. I've not got an attitude. Yeah. You're not being nasty. I mean, it, you know, it's just, it's just the comments. British Airways would have let us on so and so. And there's all different circumstances in your circumstances where you were late for the flight, you didn't get on it. Oh, 60 seconds. You know, you suggested to check in two hours before the flight, not, not giving it on the deadline. But, yeah, you're getting there tomorrow, so it's not really. Well... Even friend Nick has heard enough. <laughs> if we delay an aircraft to wait for passengers, it delays the next aircraft, and then we get told easy jet and never on time. So we haven't got the time to stand around waiting for passengers. If you're late, we won't wait. But still waiting just outside. Sound as a pound. Stone as a free. Eating Bob Dylan on Waikiki Beach. Playing with Neil Young in Malibu with 10 CC. I'd like to say thank you very much to the group and ourselves, and I hope you pass the audition. Shirley and David Teal are supposed to be in Paris celebrating their 25th wedding anniversary, but Shirley's lost her passport and is stuck in Luton waiting to hear whether French immigration will let her travel. I don't even want to be pulled into a police station if I've got to do that, no. You know, it's not as if I'm going to be causing any trouble or nothing, is it? It's not going to disappear. You've got five kids here to come back to. But Leo thinks he knows where the missing passport might be. Have you really, really checked everywhere? Nowhere else? Yeah. What about in here? Would you put it in here by accident? No, we've checked that. I've checked in there. Because I had it in the top of my bag. But right. I've noticed my bag's not done up. And I've gone through everything in there. Have you went checked it? Completely. Yeah. Anyone's welcome to have a look. It's this colour, my passport. I've gone through all my papers, everything. I've got, got a everything. little secret pocket. We know what these bags are like. No. Absolutely not there. It's not there. It's just not there. Yeah. So she's got a bag full of rubbish. It's like, it's like something off of Mary Poppins. It's like lipsticks, sweets, <laughs> serviettes, tissues, lipsticks. But 
no passport, she's actually got a toothbrush in there. Already upset about the possibility of spending their anniversary at home, they feel like they've let the family down too. Have our children done it for us for a Christmas present? They've sort of all done it together. That's a bit of a, a, bit of a downer. They gave us three boxes, didn't they? One with a, a clove of garlic in, one with an onion in, and one with a berry in. Them. And then they give us a card with a big picture of the Eiffel Tower. We're still waiting for the call. We're all on tender hooks now. We're waiting for the call from France, aren't we? And they don't have to wait long. <laughs> okay. Okay. Okay, sorry. I've just spoken. It's a no. It's a no. It's a no. French have said no. We've done everything we can. Right. She desperately wanted to go, understandably. All of her family were on board the aircraft as well. And we couldn't get them on. It's horrible. I feel bad. He's either they're going to have a nice romantic meal out or they're going to be at each other's throats because she's lost her passport and they're not going. Michelle may have gone home, but in Bristol, the trouble continues. That would be OK, and they said no, they can't check them in because they're too young to travel and accompany you. Where's, where's your paperwork, Annie? Ten-year-old Kai and 15-year-old Annie have been staying with grandparents John and Dora Browning and are due to return home to Hamburg. They travel across and they said they're too young to travel back on their own, on a company. But they came across all right. They came yeah. from Germany. Supervisor Richard Oates is left with some explaining to do. EasyJet won't permit uh, a 15-year-old to take charge of anyone under the age of 14. We want to go home. We shouldn't have allowed them to fly here. It's not our fault we're in this predicament now. <laughs> that is true, but at the same time, I can't, I can't make the two wrongs into a right. I can't, I can't allow travel back, though. So what do you advise us to do? I'm going to contact the main office again, because it was engaged just now. I'll keep trying them to get through to them to see what they can suggest for you. My son took them on the plane in Hamburg last Friday, and they were allowed to travel and accompany them. Now I'm stuck. How do I get them back home? The parents are waiting in Hamburg. <laughs> and with Annie's 16th birthday five months away, it could be a long wait. <laughs> but the wait's finally over at Gatwick. It's the launch of EasyJet's new route to Marrakesh. <laughs> For passengers Steve Milne and Catherine Starbuck, the date and destination are particularly significant. It's my birthday today, and uh, saw the announcement a couple of months ago Mar of EasyJet. First flight to Marrakesh, July the 4th, and it was one, one of those spooky, I've wanted to go to Marrakesh for 20 years, that's a sign, got to be on that plane. But a birthday and fate aren't the only reasons for their journey. We're going to search for a particular location um, because there's an image I've had in my mind for about 25 years from a picture that was given to me at university and I'd like to try and track that down as well. It's this iconic image taken in the 60s that inspired Steve to pursue a career in television and film. And it's actually this shot always has, has, has stayed with me and since I've sort of seen it I've always wanted to get to Marrakesh but for one reason or another it never happened but so I, I'd, I'd like to try and find it. Steve thinks one of the Moroccan cabin crew might be able to help him in his search. Hi, is one of you Ahmed? Yes. Hi Ahmed. wonder if you could uh, maybe be able to be of help. I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm trying to track down this location in Marrakesh. It was taken in the late 60s. But I guess we've got that tower. This is the Kutubia. It's the most famous mosque in Marrakesh. The most famous mosque. OK, so we know we'll, we'll be able to find that. This mountain range, is there, is there mountains on all four sides? When you have the Kutubia, they are in front of the Atlas. OK. They're not all around. So that. So you will, it will be easy for you to find it, maybe. OK, excellent. Okay. You're right. Obviously, it's been a, a lot of change in 45, 50 years, but... We'll find it. If only that optimism was shared in Bristol. With half an hour until the Hamburg flight, Dora and John want to get their grandchildren on board. Supervisor Richard Oates is having none of it. Um, right, 
what um, I've just double checked our head office. They will pay for someone to accompany them over to Hamburg and fly them back again. But on this flight? Uh, on this flight, if you if you have someone that can can go over, or if you need, we can get you can do it tomorrow instead. No. Well, it just depends on who can go. What time does the flight come back? It's usually back about half past ten. Tomorrow morning? No, tonight. Oh, tonight? You, you have to go to work on past three. I mean, I've got to get back to Exeter now. I've got a job of work to do. My mum had to write a document that we are travelling alone and she, that she will take the risk if anything would happen to us. The staff that do the uh, work for Freeze Jet in Hamburg may have asked for that for their records, but that it's different to, to the airline's rules themselves, though. They can sign document that your parents have set full responsibility. Surely you've got nothing to worry about. Uh, well, we do, because we can't just take that, unfortunately. No. Well, they, well, they took, took it over to Hamburg, didn't they? Uh, it's up to you. they got to go on the plane. Simple as that. If, if nobody is able to go with them with them on the flight, then they won't be able to go. Mm. I'm going to ring the car. Don't get upset. Sorry, oh. don't. I can't believe this. Annie, don't cry. I'll ring Papa. I'll ring Papa now and see. I'll do what Papa says, all right? More than a thousand miles from home in the heart of Marrakesh, Steve's search has just begun. That is Katubi, eh? There's no mistaking that. So we found building, building number one, mission established. But the Medina's amazed with its winding streets and crammed souk, so it's not long before he needs help. It was about 40 years ago, but we were, think, we were thinking these two, these two low buildings. Does he recognise one of those two? This building is different than this one here. And the best way to get there? Horse and cart or car? Car. Well, we, we can go by horse and Confident they know where the location is, they head off onto the streets of Marrakesh. I don't think this is the right place. Yeah, we need to re-establish where we are in relation to the mosque. That's going to be kind of level with everything else. Sure. And after an hour of disappointment, they think they've finally found the spot. Oh, what have we got here? OK, in we go. You see, I mean, the Kutubi is in the same angle as we see it now. Yeah, so we're directly on, on, on so this, this, this wall. Having found one landmark, it looks like Steve's a step closer to his location. But there's still one small thing missing. If I could just locate one of the mountains. I think I found a mountain. Double humped mountain. There's only one like it. And I've picked that up over there. Which means we need to be over the other side of the Medina. So I think this is going to take us a couple of days. <laughs> But we're about 30 degrees off, and we've located the mountain, and we lo we've located the mosque. So we're halfway there. But, no, it's going to be it's going to be difficult because the the whole Medina is is all one level. So it's. Uh... But hey, if it was easy, it wouldn't be any fun. Meanwhile, it's definitely no fun in Bristol. You're a bit stupid, aren't you? Why didn't you say to them, we'll let you go one way, but we won't let they you back? They shouldn't have come over. The, the I agent agree with that, does, that yeah. but I didn't let them come over, you did. No, no. Granny Dora's finally had enough. Will you, will you come up and explain to my children? He can't get home to his mother or his father or his own country. Thanks to you, thanks to that girl over there who said, sorry, you're not allowed. Have you got a stewardess on the plane? Yeah, but no, nobody's legally allowed to take responsibility. Since when? Well, some airlines are allowed to do it. What you're end. saying is don't send your grandchildren with EasyJet. We don't want to know them. No, I don't take pleasure in it at all. I do hope you understand that at the very least. It's not my personal pleasure. Well, all this could be overlooked. <laughs> Two. Yeah. Well, the point is, if I go over to that desk there and put them in, and say she's 16, <laughs> will you stay there? Take no. Well, well shall, shall I give it a try? <laughs> no. Hmm? Well, I, I think it's bloody ridiculous. Anyway, 
with the flight about to leave, it's time to consult Dad in Hamburg. Um, boat tonight, is there still a seat on the plane? For me? Dora, Dora's gonna go with you. Come on, we come back tonight. Come on. They're, they're paying. I'm best up. You We found a hug. Okay. All right. Bye. Bye Thanks for everything. Okay. 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 Bye-bye. Steve Kiln's mystery location no longer exists. Shirley Teal never found her passport. And this man will be playing at an airport near you soon. There's a new HR boss in town that doesn't suffer fools or, it seems, illicit affairs among staff. The newsroom is new tonight at 10 on Skylantic HD.